welcome back to Andy Two. During my uh, and and the Singer Model Three Thirty Eight, I'm going to continue working on this. And during my inspection, when I removed the bottom plate, I found some uh, liquid had dripped on there <coughs> from the oscillating hook system, and it had corroded off the paint. So I'm con have concern about the condition of the. Uh, oscillating hook system, oscillating hook system. So um, I've taken off all the covers, the top cover, the bottom, the nose cover, and the motor cover on the ends. Um, I've removed the uh, tension, thread upper thread tension unit because uh, as I move the machine around I don't want it to get banged up. And I've also taken off the uh, needle plate and the, the slide plate. I remove the bobbin case or bobbin holder and I remove the feed dogs because it, to, to take out the rotary hook system um, you do work underneath the machine but then it, it has to lift up and out here. And I may have to remove the needle bar, um, but but probably not. So the um, at the end of this video and in the description of the video below, I will put links to a couple of playlists: um, one for the 337 and one for the 404. That's a combination of about 80 videos that show how to remove the various covers and the parts that I've uh, removed. So if you're not familiar with that and you want to review it, I'll have those resources available for you here. Let me back out a little bit here. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say was my... I ordered some replacement screws because I had a, a screw and rubber foot missing here <laughs> and uh, I went to one of my favorite sellers thriftyfarmgirl.com and searched for these screws in a model 337 or 8 and sure enough she had them and she sold me four screws uh, for four dollars so thanks Connie McCaffrey and uh, I'll put her link there too. It's just one, one of my resources for vintage sewing machine parts. She has a lot of other brands too besides uh, Singer. So uh, this is the uh, bell crank system and my understanding is it's called a bell crank because back in the Victorian days of England with the servants bells uh, there were servants bells I guess before doorbells but that kind of a crank was uh, used to ring bells so that's why they call it a bell crank system but I want to disengage all this from the machine and the bottom of the oscillating hook post is right here and then once that's all disengaged I can pull the hook up and I can inspect these parts and you, you can still see I thinking you can that there's some black gunky corrosion on this um, hinge screw here or hinge bolt so I'm, I'm worried about what that's from and what's inside all these moving parts. Hopefully nothing. Somebody just used some weird lubricant. But um, I also notice there's a little I don't think you'll be able to hear it, but there's a little tiny bit of end play in here. So that only contributes to noise. The machine sewed well enough. But anyway, where, where I'm going to start to dismantle this is actually over at this end. This can be called the hook uh, shaft or rod. It's also called the 
Pitman, Pitman rod, uh, rod. So I need to take this off. Uh, these two hinge screws to get that off to be able to get in here and take the oscillating hook system off. And these screws uh, operate in a backward way where is they turn to the right to loosen and they turn to the left to tighten and I think that's because of the of the motion that they take all the time um, if it was a normal screw I think the screws maybe could work loose so I just took my screwdriver set and I took the biggest uh, tip that I have and uh, it's a pretty good fit even a bigger tip would have been a little better but you have to remember to turn this right and when you are gonna want to turn right you see what happens <laughs> everything moves so you have to find a way to hold the Pitman rod from just rotating everything so that you can break the screw free so I usually go right in here on the crank and try and hold it to the rod and <clears throat> boy that's yeah that's pretty pretty tight um, I'm gonna take uh, my little jeweler's hammer this is like a I don't know three or five dollar hammer on eBay it's just brass it's got a brass head and a hardwood handle and it weighs like I don't know two or three ounces um, and the idea of using brass is that it will and maybe you can see it will dent and stuff before it harms any of these aluminum or steel parts so I'm just going to uh, give some of these a, a good tap there to see if I can uh, that'll help me break this loose and I'm going to turn right to loosen get in here oh there we go okay so here comes the first hinge screw and of course called called a hinge screw the end has a screw but this part that the pitman rod rests on just allows it to to hinge to swing and uh, this one is just the uh, normal black uh, stuff <laughs> but I don't see any corrosion or anything so let's go over to this other end on this side see if I can turn right to yeah, I'm going to hold the top of the bell crank uh, up here and try and hold it and and turn, turn right. There we go. Okay. These are very, very finely milled, very snug fits. Um, that's why they need to be oiled regularly. And so here is that other uh, hinge screw. And here is the oscillating hook shaft or pitman rod. What's what's interesting to me is that the openings for the hinge screw are lined with a copper sleeving, maybe a sixteenth of an inch of what to me sure looks like copper. And I'm not sure why. Maybe that's uh, because copper can handle heat, dissipate the heat more. I don't know, but if you go to clean this, uh, don't use any wire brushes in here, okay? <laughs> Plastic or nylon would probably be okay. All right, now I've got this uh, 
exposed here and I've got the pitman rod off so I have a little more freedom here so the next thing I want to do is take off this big hinge bolt this bolt right here bolts this whole bell crank onto the base of the body of the sewing machine and this is a standard uh, uh, 5 8 uh, I use a box end wrench you could use open end if it's easier for you or a or a uh, you know adjustable crescent wrench but you get it on here now this is normal lefty Lucy so as you get it on the the head of the uh, nut isn't very deep so I just get it on here and start uh, turning it like that to see if I can break it loose and I and I did so this is one of my concerns why is this thing so black and well it's coming out pretty easily so there's a big hinge bolt you see all the muck and discoloration on the end there but there is some some black hard stuff in here here's some more of it so I don't know what kind of a lubricant was used before but we'll get that all cleaned up um, in the a frame where where that uh, bolt goes in there is an oil port and that's one of the places that you oil but let's uh let's see if i can get this up here maybe zoom in a little bit the next thing up here there is a set screw right here that holds the other end of the bell crank to the shaft of the hook so I've got to loosen or remove that set screw to be able to pull this rest of the bell crank off so usually go this way because I can get a longer angle on the screwdriver and uh, Um, I'll show you later that on this shaft there is a timing mark and because when you do this whoop, you're going to have to set this set screw back in the timing mark and the set screw instead of being flat on the end comes to a point and that point has to go in the timing mark which is really like a v-shaped groove in the hook shaft so don't don't lose it <laughs> um, see sometimes this will slide right off now Let me back out a little but often it's just uh, it's just kind of stuck to the hook shaft because it doesn't really rotate you know it's screwed to it so it's another good place the end of the shaft sticks out and you can take a rubber hammer or a, you know a screwdriver plastic there and see if there we go and see if you can break that free now there's a lot of brown and black gunk inside there that's built up so and these this part um, just pulls right out like that. So maybe you should take pictures of this if you're not familiar with it before you start dismantling it. Take take pictures of everything so when you have to put it back together. Um, this <coughs> cross member here, one end is screwed in with a hinge screw into the rest of the bell crank and the other just is a slide-on connection 
like that. And they're pretty, pretty tight fits. So that's the rest of the bell crank assembly. This this actually looked pretty clean here. This one looks pretty mucky, dirty inside. So I, nothing else is lined with that copper lining except the pitman rod. Okay. Anyway, now there's a thin uh, nut on here that uh, is. Yeah, see, there's a little end play in there that's holding the hook up into the frame or the body. And that is also a 5 8 inch. And, well, take that off. Once that's removed, we'll be able to pull the hook out of the top. You see that? It's just a very thin. 5 eighths inch nut. Let's see if we can get a little better picture here. So there's threading here. You gotta turn this all around now because I'm gonna push up from the bottom of this hook shaft right here. That's the shaft on the oscillating hook. I'm gonna push that up while up at the top I'm going to be pulling on the hook and it's just going to go straight up and it sounds pretty gritty <laughs> as it starts moving and don't let the don't let the hook point um, Hurt your hurt your fingers here or anything? Yeah, it doesn't want to okay. doesn't want to break. When I when I turned this machine over again, and started looking at it closer, I realized the hook didn't want to come out because in this particular model, there's a bracket down here, um, kind of inside the hook that holds the. Um, bobbin cushion spring assembly onto the base of the frame and the hook rotates around it so I with the bottom off and these parts removed from the top I'm going to be able to clean it using the cleaning methods uh, in the videos I linked for you um, you'll be able to clean it that way or with with your own you know cleaning method if you use pipe cleaners and alcohol or whatever um, I don't I'm not going to the hook is not damaged so there's really no reason to remove all of this and take the hook out and then go through all of the adjustments to get it back to factory specs up here unless this whole system was damaged or your hook point was uh, bent or something like that. So by taking the bell crank assembly and pitman rod and so forth uh, off of the bottom here we can get cleaning fluid from the bottom up and from the top down and we can clean all of these other parts and check their functionality get rid of the corrosion on that big hinge screw and clean it up then I'll just kind of semi reassemble it for you in case that's your goal of watching the video right now um, the first thing you start is the the flat nut that's going to go back on here righty tighty and um, wait a minute, let's see, before I do that, maybe you'll be able to see this, get in closer here. You'll be able to, in this uh, hook shaft, there's a V groove cut into it, right here. And 
when you put the bell crank back on it, you remember me saying that that pointed set screw, when you put that in, it has to line up with that V groove, and that's called the timing mark. Okay. So when you take off the bell crank here, you'll see a big um, V groove milled right into the steel shank. So uh, we'll put the nut back on like uh, so. It's just righty tighty. You put that on. Then when you tighten it up, here's the trick, and if you need somebody to help you, but you have to go up on the top side up here, and you have to push down on that hook very firmly because you want the hook to be seated down all the way while you tighten this nut. If you don't have it down all the way, you're going to get what's called end play in the the hook's going to bounce around and be more noisy. So you want to push the hook down and hold it while, you're, while you tighten that up. Well, now that we've got this uh, nut back on, securely holding the hook, uh, we can put the bell crank system back on here. And the way to be sure to put it on correctly is Remember this hinge screw that holds the connecting bar? That's on the back side away from you. And the little part that goes on the hook shaft and has the set screw, you know, slides in from you towards the machine. So that's, that's how it stays all held together there. And what I'd like to do is that that uh, timing mark that V groove that's that's on here? Let me go in here a little closer. I like to turn that so it's at about three o'clock because I can I can get the screwdriver in there better to put in the set screw. So I will just slide that guy on there. And I'll put the set screw opening at about 3 o'clock to match the timing mark. And you usually have to kind of fiddle around, hold the hook so your timing mark stays where you want it. In this case, about 3 o'clock. And then the set screw opening to, to match that area. One of those times I wish I had a third hand, right? <laughs> See if I can come come down there maybe so it doesn't block the view as much. And then I'll just get my set screw started because once it's in a few turns you can you can use the screwdriver to move the bell crank and around to where it lines up with that timing mark. Come on, you. Get in here. Yeah. There, okay. Yeah, it's just a little fiddly thing here, trying to do it on video. You know, with the old YouTube software, I, I would edit a lot of this out, believe it or not. <laughs> so you didn't have to watch me fumble around as much. Okay, I've got it in there. I'm going to go up to the hook. Go back out a little bit. Go up to the hook and turn that hook so that my timing mark V groove is lined up nice with my set screw. See if I get this little screwdriver in here to kind of firm it up into place. Whoop! Oh, and by the way, you have you have to be sure that you hold this um, bell crank up against that nut because you don't want any end play below the nut either. 
when we put the nut on we pushed hard down on the hook while we tightened that now when we put the bell crank on the shaft we want to push up hard against that nut because you don't you don't want any pl play above or below that uh, re re retaining nut it's just going to give you a sloppy hook and noise and wiggle that around to be sure I'm in the groove and now when I move it I see the timing marks moving with it so I know my set screw is in that timing mark so I'll take my bigger screw and turn it in there real good and make sure it's not going to work loose okay that looks pretty good now I'm going to line up the opening for my big hinge bolt for the reassembly of this. Turning the bell crank kind of to the left here. Then I can get my hinge bolt lined up in there and make sure that it's starting to thread in and threaded in nicely. Of course all this work would be after I've cleaned it. I just wanted to show you how to do it. So you don't have to wait until I get to that part later. So there we've got our nice bell crank movement that's going to make that hook oscillate back and forth. Now we'll put in our connecting rod, all right? And you see the groove goes in the back and the singer part number is up here on the front left. And you can see the copper sleeve is smooth here and it's been expanded a little bit in the back. So that's how I, I know how to get it in there. And I'm gonna start it over here on the left and, and both of these hinge screws are the same part and get my started in there and hold it up and just remember to turn it left to tighten it if you're turning it right and wondering why the threads won't start it's because it's a backhanded screw or wrong way screw it goes left to tighten so I'll just kind of finger tighten it in there now and then I'll take my other one and go over here on the crank that comes from the vertical shaft and line that up and put in my other hinge screw that screws right into that hole threaded hole in the crank there we go 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 left to tighten so we we put the back nut on by pressing down from the hook from up above we got that nut tight then we put our bell crank on here and pushed it up tight while we put in the set screw matching it up with the V groove the timing mark so I'm just gonna spin the thing here and see yeah see how nice that is so once you clean it up and put it back in you're gonna have a lot smoother operation and you might you might have a little bit of play in this system just from wear so it's good if you take it off and clean it and put it back together. So, let's see where's my, I need my large screwdriver bit. I'm in the habit of putting them back in the case so I don't lose them. Okay, I'll pop it in my little Chapman screwdriver Oh, I'm so happy with that system I bought. Okay, so so now 
I'm going to turn it left some more and gently snug it up and I'm going to do kind of both ends like that. I'm not going to tighten one end super tight and then the other. I'll just do that. Now they're snug. I'll just give them a little about an eighth of an inch crank to tighten them up good. I'm going to hold on to that cam. There we go. So, it even sounds a little smoother up in here to me, but let's, let's set it up in a sewing position. And let's take a look at that oscillating horizontal hook now. Yeah, very nice. And I mean, I haven't even cleaned out all the lint and grease and stuff yet. <laughs> and it's really nice. So, for myself, I'm going to disassemble all that again so that I can do my cleaning thing on it. But that's how to remove and replace the bell crank uh, system on the bottom of the hook. The oscillating horizontal hook. So, you may have not seen something like that before. But now you now you see it, and the, most of the oscillating hooks on these singers operate in this same method, and they're not that hard to, you know, take out and clean and put back together nice and tight to make sure you don't have any end play or backlash in the system. And uh, if you need to uh, retime the system. I can, I'll be showing that later after I clean the machine and stuff like that. And you can also look at the playlist that I've mentioned that I'll be posting with this video on the 337. I think one of the parts of the 337 playlist described um, how to time the hook on, on this 337, which would be the same for the 338. All right. Success. Thanks for tuning in and, and watching this. And I'll be doing a few more videos on this 338. Uh, comments and questions are welcome. You can comment or question on the video itself or on the about page for my channel. It does list an email address for the channel. That's uh, andytube53 at gmail. So if you have a more involved question or you want to, you know, send pictures or something of a problem you're having, I try to get back with people uh, pretty quickly. Thanks for watching. Come back and see me, please. Take care.